Welcome to the U.S. Kiss Vinyl Reference YouTube channel. Please like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Hi folks, welcome back to another episode of the U.S. Kiss Vinyl Reference. I am your host, Mike Stone, and we're going to continue on with doing an album-specific episode. Eh, it's probably going to be that way for a minute anyway. And if you've been following along, you will see that we're going to talk about Crazy Crazy Nights. So, um, one of my favorite non-makeup albums, and it has been pointed out to me how, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for here. I don't think it's ironic so much as maybe hypocritical, but uh, so those that know me know that I'm not a huge, huge fan of hair bands. Uh, I'll avoid naming them off just so I don't hurt anybody's feelings, but I mean, y'all know who I'm talking about. I love Crazy Nights. And it is not lost on me that this is Kiss trying to fit in with some of the uh, the bands of the era, so to speak. So we'll uh, we'll dive into this album a little bit, not a whole lot of variation, and then got a few singles to talk about. So. Uh, Grab what you need to grab, and I will see you in a minute. All right, folks, welcome back. So, as I said, we're going to talk about Crazy Nights today. I inadvertently called it Crazy Crazy Nights in the little forward there but eh, it is what it is I didn't feel like recutting it so so I believe this is another September album guess what Mike didn't do his damn research again but I've got all these dates in my calendar so all I gotta do is pull up my calendar on my phone search crazy nights Voila, yes, it's in September of 1987, so. Admittedly, I mean, it's still not the greatest look for the band. It is an improvement over Asylum, you know. Not everybody's wearing robes this time around. It's more, you know, you, you Gen X folks like me, you know, you'll, uh, you'll recognize the name body glove there there there's a lot of that uh bruce nvp on this record just burning the whole the whole damn record through uh absolutely love guitar or bruce's guitar work here and then some of you's gonna be like, oh, well, they went too heavy on the keyboards. Well, look at the time, okay? Ozzy's Ultimate Sin, pretty heavy on keyboards. Iron Maiden, Somewhere in Time, which we'll, we'll talk about here in a second. It's guitar sense, but the same thing, basically. Uh, dear God. Judas Priest, Turbo, uh, even Saxon kind of looked a little wonky during this time period. So, I mean, it's just the flavor that was there. And, I mean, it's not like keyboards are a prominent in instrument on here like Van Halen's 1984 album. So, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's an augmenter is all it is. I have no problem with the keyboards. Uh, so, all of that bitching aside, so I'm recording this, uh, the day after the record store day drop, 
and uh, I usually don't participate in record store day uh, I mean if there's something I really want most of the time I'll just wait until afterwards if it's still there it's there if it's not you know it is what it is but uh I had a friend who was in need of a uh, 10,000 volts ace pitcher disc that was released yesterday so I decided to ah, hell you know it's not like I'm looking for a cure for cancer or anything so I went driving around I I found it for him you know so I've got it boxed up and ready to go to him uh, I did not get the Eric Carr LP set. I I had a couple of people put up notices that their shop had them online this morning, and I bought one, so I'll have one on, on its way to me. But I did miss out yesterday on finding it in the shop, so uh, I just got around a little late. Uh, hell, I, I don't think I pulled up to my first record store until almost 10 o'clock in the morning, so... But, uh, so I found the, uh, the Ace Pitcher disc. I have the Eric Carr release coming to me. Um, there was one other title that, you know, I'd kind of like to have, but I forgot about it yesterday, and that was the, the Dio Last in Line Pitcher disc. I, I forget the word for it, but if you uh if you watch the outer edge as it spins it's got some kind of am animation uh zotrope i think is what they call it anyway and then uh while i was out and about in the big town of joplin missouri which i don't really get up to too much uh went ahead and stopped at target and i finally got a CD copy of uh, The Invincible Shield by Judas Priest, which is a great fucking album. I've been playing the shit out of it on Spotify, but, you know, I've finally got a physical copy. I don't know. I mean, I had all this stuff on vinyl years ago, and I've sold it all off. I'm not too sure about recollecting it, so to speak, so I don't have a Priest vinyl collection. Um, but yeah, I, I collected everything of theirs from the UK years ago from their first, um, first album, Rockerola up to, uh, at the time, I think their most recent was Angel of Retribution, I think was the last album that I had on vinyl before I sold it off. And after Target, I went to Walmart. And I always look at their uh, their vinyl selection because they've got a bunch of Walmart exclusives. And so um, some of you won't be surprised by this and some of you will. I'm going to go on record. See what I did there. I'm going to go on record saying Kiss is not my favorite band. They are not. Uh if they're in my top 10, they're barely there. Uh, and, and that's the God's honest truth. I'm not, I'm not trying to be contrary or anything that I'm, that I'm not. Kiss really isn't my favorite band. I do love Kiss. Don't get me wrong. They're not my favorite band. That honor gets bestowed upon Iron Maiden. We had just mentioned somewhere in time. So this is a Walmart exclusive on yellow vinyl. Uh, I forget the, the actual name of the color that they call it. Uh, well, just yellow vinyl. Okay, the hype sticker. I knew the hype sticker had like several words on it. I just figured it was some weird explanation for the color yellow. But uh, anyway, it comes with this nice little 3D uh, print for the Future Past World Tour. 
and uh, that would be why there is just an exclusive for somewhere in time because this future past tour focuses on the the their latest album which was Senjutsu. I, I hope I say that right. I mean I'm obviously not Japanese so and then it focuses on the Somewhere in Time album also. So so yeah I managed to pick that up. Uh I did see that a couple of weeks ago posted on the Walmart page that that was going to be coming. So that was something that I wanted to get. And uh, Maiden is another band that I had a big vinyl collection of that I also have since sold off. Um, I mean, I've got a few of their albums on vinyl now. It's just not a not something I really want to collect again, but good Lord, all their UK stuff, you know, albums, picture discs, seven inch singles, 12 inch singles, seven inch single picture disc, 12 inch single picture disc, shape picture disc. Good God. The only thing I didn't have was the Soundhouse tapes, which those of you that are Maiden fans know that that's their first seven inch that they released kind of like a demo, but but yeah, I, Somewhere in Time is one of my favorite Maiden albums. So, you know, the Walmart exclusive, that was a given. Uh, I have a few different variations of their most recent album on vinyl. I've got like a red and then a black and then a silver. And then I've got a, a three LP set uh, from the number of the beast. And it has a, a, a show from that tour on it so that, that's that's my maiden vinyl collection now i kind of like these walmart exclusives so you know i might not necessarily be a vinyl collector of a band but if if walmart releases an album that i like as an exclusive i'll go ahead and pick it up so you know my top shelf right up over here is kind of random you know just a couple albums here and there by a certain artist you know be like Alice in Chains Dirt and then the first two Stone Temple Pilots albums and uh, the first first six Van Halen albums you know they're all Walmart exclusives yeah that's that's just kind of my thing I, I've got the Zeppelin catalog up there that's Walmart exclusive and I mean truth be told I'm not a huge Zeppelin fan either but I respected them enough to buy the, the Walmart exclusives of their vinyl. So, so record store day out of the way. So crazy nights, not a whole lot of variation on the vinyl and, uh, well, let's go ahead and dig into it. So we are going to start off, as always, with the promotional copy. So continuing from where Asylum left off in some aspects, we have the hype sticker that is directly on the cover. And as I said in the, in the Asylum episode, I'm not too convinced that promos were sealed because these hype stickers being on the jacket that was usually done after the shrink wrap so you know the fact that these jackets got the hype sticker placed directly on them tells me that they kind of skipped that shrink wrap spot so all right and then we have a gold stamp on the back of the jacket right there between gene and paul inner sleeve i don't know off the top of my head about any variations so um i'm just going to say this is a glossy inner sleeve with a black and white picture of the band and then you've got lyrics on the other side i do not see a printing plant number on the inner sleeve like i have with past releases and then not picking up or lick it up left off or lick it up asylum left off 
So there's our mercury label. Notice under the left hand side where it says stereo and side A, you see a number 49. So there's your pressing plant number. Go on over to the right hand side and the promotional text is back. So they finally, finally made a uh, album in the 80s that actually said it was a promo copy. So, and... Light does not pass through this album. Uh, I have not heard of a copy of the a promotional copy of Crazy Nights that has light pass through it. So there is your promotional copy for Crazy Nights. And I will point out on promo and retail. Right here in this lower corner of the jacket, you'll see a number 0704 that my camera is not picking up. So I have not seen a retail copy with any other mark. Let's see if see if that'll work. Nope. So all of the all of the retail copies I've seen have had an 0704. I haven't seen another printing plant number on the back of a jacket. So there is the promotional copy of Crazy Nights. Now, getting into retail copies, we've got a few variations. First off, the jacket is exactly the same as the promo copy, minus the promo stamp. And the inner sleeve is glossy. It's got the band. It's got lyrics. There's no printing plant number anywhere. and the label so just like the promotional copy if you look on the left hand side under where it says stereo and side a you'll see a number 49 so there's your pressing plant number and folks we are entering into the age of the death of vinyl so from here out, there's not going to be a lot of variation. I mean, there's there's still going to be like some variation, but there's not going to be a lot like there was before. Uh, we are entering into the CD age. So there's one retail copy of Crazy Nights. All right, the next one. We have the same jacket as before with that 0704 down there. Boy, my camera is just playing hard to get today. Glossy inner sleeve, band picture, lyrics, no printing plant number. So far, they've also had rounded corners here. For what that's worth. All right. And we have a Mercury label. And if you look off to the far left in the rim text, right before the word manufactured, you'll see a number 53. So there is your pressing plant number. really the only difference is from here out is pressing plant numbers some 
some folks probably don't really look at that as a variation, but I mean, it's, it's something different from the label before it. And most of the time the layout is different on the label too. All right, next up, same jacket with that 0704 there. Same glossy inner sleeve with lyrics and no printing plant number. All right. Now, if you look over to the left hand side under where it says stereo and side A, you'll see a number 76. There's yet another variation. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit. We have a picture disc to talk about. Haven't seen one of these in a minute. So this comes in a uh, PVC sleeve. And yes, it does look cloudy because I've got a disc keeper slid down in there to, and, and I've got the disc inside the disc keeper. Um, so during my first run of collecting vinyl with Judas Priest, they had a, uh, a box set called for their LP, uh, Nostradamus, which was, was either a two or three LP set. I can't remember off the top of my head now, but they was on black vinyl and they came in PVC sleeves and I left that box sealed for years and I finally cracked it open one day and I mean those vinyl <clears throat> those records just looked rough I mean just cloudy and kind of pitted looking and I had come to find out that the vinyl was reacting to these PVC sleeves so <clears throat> from then on out anytime I seen a picture disc that came in a PVC sleeve like this I made sure I put a disc keeper in there, even though this was 30 something years old by the time I got a hold of it, you know, so any damage would have been done. But so we have a color version of the uh, picture from the inner sleeve on the front of the disc. And on the back, we have the album cover. I believe I said that right. Yeah, the album cover side is side B. So. And then on the uh, the PVC sleeve, we have a hype sticker for the out for the picture disc. And the picture disc has a separate catalog number from the album. I believe it might have even been released at a different time. I'm not 100% sure on that. And there are picture discs that have a white hype sticker. Those come from Europe. The U.S. had this black hype sticker here. As to whether or not they are completely different pressings of the actual record, I don't know. They could have just took some of these, shipped them over to Europe, got the white hype sticker. I honestly don't know if they're different. So There's the picture disc. Oop. Guess I ought to put that back in my resealable sleeve here. There we 
good on. Now we have a record club version. So this is from BMG. So we have the address information from BMG up here in this upper right corner. Which I don't know why my camera is being a little bitch, but there we go. And then in the lower left corner, we have the license number. No 0704. The inner sleeve is a matte finish. So we've got the picture of the band. Then we've got lyrics on the back. Still no, uh, no printing plant number. Now, the label, so if you look on the right hand side underneath the catalog number, you'll see distributed under license from Polygram Records Incorporated by BMG Direct Marketing Incorporated. Then on the left hand side, you'll see the license number, and then stereo, side A, and then a number 70. And then if you look at the rim text before the word manufactured, you'll see a number 53. So there's a lot to take in on that. So you got two different plant numbers and then BMG has got it marked on the label. And then I am going to throw up one here. It's a variation that I don't have yet. So as you can see there is everything is the same except when you get to that rim text down below there is no 53 there so there is a variation with and without that 53 plant number printed on the label that was just pointed out to me not too long ago So that's, a, that's something I'm on the hunt for as well. And then we're going to skip ahead to 2014. So we all know about the Kisteria box set now. We know some titles were exclusive to the set. Some weren't. This was not. Back to a glossy inner sleeve with lyrics. And the label was reissued on a Mercury label. And down at the bottom it says 2014 the Island Def Jam Music Group. So you can distinguish that from a vintage copy. And there has not been a recent colored vinyl reissue for Crazy Nights yet, unfortunately. Um, I kind of would like to see one myself. Uh, hell, there's, there's enough unused songs from around this time period they can do a whole ass box set for crazy nights i think and i think it would probably sell a lot better than what some of the powers that be that control that stuff think it would so so 2014 is the last reissue for the album in the u.s so now we're going to talk about some singles and I ain't getting to the 45s yet, so we've got three radio singles. And these are the uh, the radio station promos that I've been showing since uh, Lick It Up. So this one comes in a plain white jacket, and then it's got a hype sticker. 
plain white inner sleeve. And the label. So there's your Mercury label. If you look over to the left underneath where it says 33 and a third and stereo, you see a number 49. So there's your pressing plant number. And then over to the right underneath the catalog number, it says promotional copy not for sale. And it's the same label on both sides. Also, no light passes through. And that's for Crazy Crazy Nights. Just a little something to send out to the radio stations to play. And these, these here were promo only. There's no stock copy to these 12 inch singles here. Alright. Next up is Reason to Live. And it's still in a company jacket, but the jacket has changed. Now it says Polygram Rocks Radio across the top. This one has a black 0704 in the corner. There we go. And then we've got a hype sticker stuck to the jacket. Plain white inner sleeve. And the label on the left hand side it says side one 33 and a third rpm stereo you see a 016 underneath it so there's your pressing plant number i can't remember where, whether i said that was the right or left hand side but it's the left hand side and then on the right hand side it says promotional copy not for sale and then the catalog number and again, it's the same label on both sides. Now this one, light does pass through it and it's a brownish color. And me personally, I've just, I've never really seen the point of 12 inch singles like this. It's just wasted vinyl to me. I mean, this song obviously fits on a 45 because I'm staring right at one. But it just gives us something else to collect. All right. And then the last... 12 inch single and my personal favorite song off of crazy nights is turn on the night so we got that same polygram rocks radio sleeve hype sticker on the jacket again with the 0704 on the back plain white inner sleeve So if you look on the left hand side, it says 33 and a third RPM stereo and then a number 49. So there's your pressing plant number. On the right hand side, underneath the catalog number, it says promotional copy not for sale. And light does not pass through this one.
Yes, I did say this was my favorite song off of Crazy Nights. I like several songs on Crazy Nights. There's one song in particular that I really like that was not on Crazy Nights called Sword and Stone, which I am happy to be able to say that I saw Bruce's band perform in Nashville in 2022. So, that's the end of the 12-inch singles for this album. And now, we'll talk about 45s. So, the first one is Crazy Nights backed with No No No, which has a awesome beginning with Bruce doing some uh, finger tapping on the guitar that I quite like. So for the promo copy, got a Mercury label. If you look off to the left hand side, it says promotional copy, not for sale. And then it's got the time and all that other stuff. And at the bottom of that, you'll see a number 49. So there's your pressing plant number. And it's the same on both sides. And I do have a picture sleeve with this one. I'm not 100% convinced that promos came in a picture sleeve. My biggest thing about that is most of the time the picture sleeves give you the B-side. And there's no B-side on the promo most of the time. And also, if you're a programmer getting all this stuff ready, looking at that's not going to help you at all. I mean, hopefully the right record's in it. It might not be. But, looking at that, however, you can see exactly what record you're trying to grab. So, I'm, uh, I lean more towards promotional copies not having picture sleeves. That's, uh, that's my take on it. All right. Getting into retail copies now. So we have a picture sleeve. It's the same as the album. This is for Crazy Crazy Nights, and it's got No, No, No on the B-side. On the back, underneath that Polygram logo, there's a black 0704. That my camera is not picking up. I've yet to find a picture sleeve that has a different cat or a printing plant number. So, and like I said, we're getting to the age where vinyl's starting to die. So, all right. So here's your Mercury label. First things first. There's no plant number anywhere on the label. So that's that's the main main thing we're looking for on this. No matter where the logo is or any of the rest of the stuff, there's no pressing plant number anywhere on the label. So there's Crazy Nights. And there's No, No, No. Next variation. We have the same picture sleeve. And then what we're going to notice here, we got the Mercury label. Off to the left hand side, it gives you the time. And then at the bottom of all that, you'll see a number 49. So there's Crazy Nights. And there's no, no, no. And 
And that intro that Bruce plays to No No No, the tapping part, it's fun to play. But, uh, you know, I've, I've played guitar for a couple of decades now. Um, kind of like Eddie Van Halen, Bruce has huge fucking hands compared to me. I mean, my hands are not exactly small by any means, but, I mean, Eddie Van Halen, Bruce Kulick, Steve Vai, all them guys, it seems like they've got fingers that are that damn long. But, uh, you know, there's some tapping runs by these guys that I have trouble playing. Uh, most notably with Eddie Van Halen is the, uh, the tapping part, the Spanish Fly. He does a really, really hard stretch with his left hand that I, I've actually, I actually have pain in my wrist right now from trying it. Not, not literally like trying it now, but I've been trying to relearn it recently over the last few weeks. And I've, I've tried that stretch so much that I've actually got pain in my wrist from it. So I'm thinking about giving up on Spanish fly once and for all. I mean, I can't play the rest of the song anyway. It was just the tapping part that I wanted to learn. But, uh, the same with Bruce, he, he's got a really long stretch there in the, in the beginning that, I mean, I can do it, but it's, I'm looking at the fretboard and I'm concentrating exactly on what I'm doing. So, I mean, I just, wasn't born with long enough fingers, unfortunately. So, curse you, Bruce. But I just, I love that intro to death. And I wanted to learn how to play it. So, all right. Next up, we have Reason to Live. Backed with, I'm horrible with these B-sides. Thief in the Night. So again, with the promo copy, I have a picture sleeve with it, but I'm not convinced that they came like that because I mean, the B sides there. And if somebody pulls this out, well, I mean, they can't see in a quick and timely manner that the right records in it. So I think this is how promos would have came to a radio station. I could be wrong. So, with the promo copy, if you look off to the left hand side, it'll say promotional copy, not for sale. And then down there at the bottom of all that, you'll see a plant number 49. So there's your pressing plant number. And again, it's the same label and track on both sides. It's just a... Uh, I believe a cost cutting measure. They can play one side until it wears out, flip it over and play the other. The record company doesn't have to send out as many promos, so it saves them money. Because by 1987, well, hell, the first, uh, the last mono stereo promo from KISS was in 80 yeah it was uh, it was tomorrow so i guess there wasn't a whole lot of music being played on am radio by then that which would be what the mono would be used for all right now we got a retail copy of reason to live so we've got a different picture sleeve from the album cover finally album covers on the back of course and then there's a 0704 underneath that polygram logo and then the vinyl So off to the left hand side, it gives you the time. And then at the bottom of all that, you see a number 49. So there's reason to live. And there's thief in the night. 
And that is the only retail variation that I am aware of for this single. So they're starting to uh, starting to streamline the 45s down a little bit now. Either that or these things just weren't selling. All right. Next up is tomorrow and uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Turn on the night backed with hell or high water. And same as the other two, I have a pitcher sleeve that came with it. I'm just not convinced it should have. And the vinyl. So there on the left, it says promotional copy, not for sale. And at the bottom, you'll see a 016. So there's your pressing plant number. And again, same thing on both sides. Uh, this was the last title that I needed a promotional copy for. Uh, I still had a couple of variations to get after I found this one, but once, once a buddy of mine fixed me up with this one, I had a promo copy of every title on 45, so... This was a uh, this was one I was looking forward to for a few different reasons. It would be that one, and it's just my favorite song off of Crazy Nights. Uh, like I said, I'm usually not a fan of the uh, the hair metal genre as a whole, but I do like a catchy anthemic sing along chorus. Apparently. And then we have retail copy so we get another picture sleeve that is not the album cover but the album cover is on the back of it again this one has an 0501 in the lower left hand almost corner I don't believe I've seen another plant number on on the backs of these pitcher sleeves for turn on the night. And then the vinyl. So off to the left hand side, and it gives you the time. And then at the bottom of all that, you'll see a number 49. So there's your pressing plant number. So there's turn on the night. And there's hell and high water. Hell or high water. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so that does the Crazy Nights era for the U.S. Uh, like I said, there ain't a whole lot of variation. A uh, couple of these 45s are fairly tough to come across. Uh, you know, like I said, it took me forever to find that turn on the night promo. And uh, I've got a buddy or two that's looking for the Reason to Live 45 promo for a while that I've kind of been looking for for him. So, but yeah, that's a, uh, that's a wrap on Crazy Nights. Uh, like I said, I love the album. I'm not fond of the genre of music that it is trying to uh, imitate, but God damn it, I love the album. So, um, I mean, I think Kiss, uh, I think Kiss out Bon Jovi, Bon Jovi on this one, personally. I mean, other people might say, "Oh, he's talking shit about Bon Jovi." Well, you know, I'm not a fan, so I guess I can do that. So. But uh, anyway, I appreciate you uh, hanging in there with me. And uh, hell, 
If you haven't been going along with me looking at what you have after you get off of here, go get into your record storage device and see what all copies you got. So I appreciate you hanging in there with me and I will catch you next time.